Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 121 where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net that's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net and I will do my best to answer them let's get right to it first one is called here is a quote for you that I thought of and this is from of one of our um, license plate members who has a license plate in California that says F-I-L-T-A-S-T, -T, which is uh, flat with its embedded in the middle of it. His quote is, if you have the balls to look into flat earth, it will flat out change your life. And that was sent by Steve Griffith. Thank you, Steve. That is awesome. Great quote. This one's called, Why Isn't the Moon Always Full? What Obscures Its Light? Mark, I'm open to Flat Earth, but just a few questions. One is the one above regarding the moon. Also, I would, I would think it would be so easy for a ship to travel from the southern tip to South America to Australia, and that would tell one how far apart they are. They are. Why has this not been done, or has it been? Thanks, Joyce Tessman. Okay, first, uh, why is the moon always full? What obscures its light? Uh, if the moon is self-illuminated, which it appears to be, then it can obscure its own light. Again, I use the planetarium reference many times, which is when you go to a planetarium and you see a half moon, quarter moon, uh, crescent moon, all that fun stuff. Uh, how does that happen? Does that happen because there is a sun inside that building and the earth is between it? Nope, it is just part of the display system. When it comes to the ships, that's a little more difficult because how do you measure distance on a boat? Usually, uh, other than the star charts, which can be instanced, uh, you're using the GPS system nowadays. And the GPS um, uh, it works for the matrix, lack of a better term. So there you go. I know I'm using a movie reference there, but hey, it's 20 years old. Hard to believe, by the way, The Matrix is 20 years old this year. All right, this one's called Survival Guide. Please, hi, Mark, how's it going? Could you please send me your survival guide? My wife just recently bought a book on how to prepare for the end of the world. I looked to her and said, why don't you tell me? Why, why didn't you tell me? I can get one for free. So here I am asking, thanks for everything. Grace and peace, and that's from Jonathan. And yeah. If anyone wants a free survival guide, which I wrote shortly after the whole Katrina thing happened, uh, just email me. Just send all you don't even have to say hi or anything, although it'd be nice. Uh, email me and say, I want the survival guide. It's about two megs. It's called Empty Shelves, and it covers just about everything you could think of regarding an end of the world type situation, uh, including looting. So how's that for fun? This one's called South Pole. And it is an image. Uh, is an, that is weird. Uh, the guy actually took a... He, he wrote two sentences in a WordPad document. And then he pasted... Then he attached it to the email, but didn't put it in the body of the email. That's fine. Mark, has there been an aerial shot of it? Doesn't the advancement of science refute flat earth? Uh, no, there is no aerial shot of the end of the world anyway. That, well, South Pole, sure, of course. But the Antarctic continent is the, uh, the, the, out of all the images that have been taken of everything in our world, the Antarctic continent has the lowest resolution and there's some dead zones in there where there's, there's no images as far as we can tell. So how is that possible? Again, especially if you believe in the GPS system, which has 32... Uh, blanket coverage overlapping satellites. And there's supposedly thousands and thousands of, of satellites up there taking millions of images. And we hardly get anything from Antarctica at all. So how is that working? How, how, does that, how is that possible? And uh, doesn't the advance, advancement of science uh, go against Flat Earth? Yeah, of course, because they have a vested interest to stomp out Flat Earth. Remember, science as an institution, which is really turned into scientism, which is more or less its own religion, they have really been hitting uh, all the, the big five religions, um, you know, Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity, over the head with textbooks for the last five centuries. And now they, uh, you know, as it gets more and more advanced, they, they can't risk it. So no, they're, science is never going to give in willingly. Unfortunately, we're going to have to take it from them. 
This one's called Survival Guide Update Suggestion. Hi, Mark. I requested and received your survival guide a while ago, and it's awesome. I even printed out extra copies and gave them as Christmas gifts to family members. Yes, you know what? I did too some years ago because I just couldn't get them to read it, and I knew full well they weren't going to print it out. Um, I did, however, feel you were missing something. May I kindly suggest a section on female issues? Ooh, sp- specifically menstruation. There is a reusable product out there called the Diva Cup. I did not know this. It takes the place of other disposable menstrual products and can be used again and again during a women's l- woman's lifetime. I won't go into too many gory details, but I'd strongly recommend this being on an essentials list for any woman to have on hand in times of disasters. Owning just one Diva Cup will save a person the need to continuously seek out disposable products every 21 to 35 days. Trust me, this is going to be an issue if it comes down to it. One Diva Cup can be used for up to 10 years, which is a pretty big deal if supplies are hard to come by. I hope this recommendation doesn't make you too uncomfortable. It's just a basic bodily function us ladies have to deal with on a monthly basis, so I think it should be mentioned as an essential. I am always surprised how many women have never heard of this awesome product. When I mention it, I work in the medical field, so nothing really phases me when discussing body functions. Cheers from the brutal cold of Canada. And that's from Allison. Yeah. Uh, You know what? That's not a bad idea. I am going to look up Diva Cups. And uh, heck, I might even pick up a couple. Sure, why not? This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, why would hurricanes in the so-called northern and southern hemispheres spin in opposite directions on a stationary flat Earth? Thanks, Jay. Uh, I don't know. Part of the system, I guess. You know, weather. Look, the the weather pattern. It, it whether it is on a sphere or on an enclosed circular area. The weather patterns are still going to be what they are. Uh, if you think that they are spinning in opposite directions because they are on a globe, that's fine. I say they're spinning in opposite directions because they're on the outer rim. Who's right? I, I think I'm right. But if you think you're right, that's fine. D- again, you're just because you can recite what science tells you doesn't mean they're right. Remember, science also tells you what the core of the earth looks like. Even though they've never been there, they tell you what carbon dating is, even though there's a lot of flaws with carbon dating and evolution and the Big Bang and dark matter and dark energy and so on and so on. So just because you read that this, the spins in for hurricanes in the southern hemisphere are because they are in the southern hemisphere doesn't mean it's a globe. It just means they're in a different part of the world. Sorry, that's what I got. This one's called Wow Flat Earth. Thanks for the guild invite. Hi, Mark. The messenger here to jog your excellent memory, sending you some pics to place a face to you, your your new guild member. Like mentioned, I met you at the famous Arcadia and Altadena meetups. Yeah, I'm the guy with the hat. In addition, a tad from my extensive archive of Flat Earth involvements. See you in Azeroth. Uh, I'll be 120 soon. And that's from Gabriel. Yeah, uh, anyone wants to join, you know, because I'm when I'm compiling videos on this machine, I got to do something. You know, I'm not going to stare at the screen and just watch a progress bar. So I still play Warcraft. I've still got my Warcraft account from 14 years, and I actually have a guild because even when I'm gaming, I am uh, thinking of Flat Earth. So uh, and so the guild is called Flat Earth, and so when I'm walking around, it says my name and then Flat Earth underneath it. And so I'm constantly broadcasting Flat Earth, Flat Earth, Flat Earth, and people ask, that's great. And I encourage anyone, if you're still playing Warcraft, join the Flat Earth Guild. It's on the Stone Mall server. All you have to do is uh, either message me there or email me here, and I will send you an invite. And uh, we, it's a casual guild, you know, no big pressure, and you can have some fun doing that. Moving on, this one's called Survival Guide, please. Hello, Mark. It's the Awakened Soviet Block. Oh, good. Uh, you know what? I get to read this because, like, part of it's actually in Russian, and I, I can't read Russian. But uh, let's. So, it's the Awkward Soviet Block. We talked on the phone today. I would like to get a copy of the Survival Guide. As for the documentary behind the curve, you don't really have to do that for me. Don't know if you guys get any kind of royalties from that production and wouldn't want to steal or impose. Either way, appreciate your time today and that guide is more than enough. 
Oh, and I'm not sure what's with the quotes, but if you click them, I've got one for you. It's going to be a rough translation, so here it goes. If you remove all the lies from the history, it does not mean that what you've got left is the truth. As a result, there might be nothing left. <laughs> nice. And that's uh, apparently an old Russian saying. So thank you, and that's from Irene. I'm not going to say more than that. Uh, but she's really, really cool, and she's called into the show, and she's actually from Russia, living in America, and I don't think she's a spy. This one's called, Mark, your answer's on your five questions from the speech. Uh, here we go, and it's in two different languages. Oh, and it's from Croatia. Go figure. Uh, I'm not going to do the accent. Uh, one is long distance photography. Uh, the answer is, take nobody's word for it. The, uh, the water is flat. Vacuum in space versus gravity? The answer, Earth is flat and stationary. Solar eclipse, moon versus the Earth? Heliocentric spherical model is not a reality. Moon temperature? The moonlight cools the objects it, it reveals. And the Van Allen radiation belts? We never went to the moon. Awesome. Cool. And that's from Stunko Zagreb from Croatia in Europe. <laughs> he actually put that. Awesome. Well, yeah, I suppose some people don't know where creation is. Okay, this one's called New Video. Hey, Mark, Sean Rose here again from Greenwood, Indiana. I posted a short new vid and thought you might dig. It demonstrates the limitation of human vision to make the point that it's not just what we see that matters, but perhaps more importantly, what we cannot see. J. Tolan Media and others using infrared do a great job of illustrating that point. It's fairly short, under six minutes. In this vid helps, if this vid helps just one person, then my effort was well worth it. Keep it flat, my friend. That's from Sean. And the vid link is from Flat Earth Extraordinary Claims. And P.S. I added some new shirts to my shop. I added a pic of one. I hope you dig. Please check them out when you can. Thanks. And it's from Etsy. And the t-shirt shop is called Thirsty. T-I, or sorry, T-H-I-R-S-T-S-H-O-P. Thirsty shop. And if I go to it, the image is of all sorts of cool little flatter things. Wow. He's got a lot of stuff in there. That's awesome. Great. So check it out if you guys are looking for t-shirts. Fun stuff. Thank you. This one's called Short Vid. Hey Mark, check out a very short video I made on my little YouTube channel called Boo Morningstar. The video is called Proving Flat Earth in a Game. I use Star Trek online game. You can see my ship fly across the Earth first, following the curve, then flying straight across and out into space. Thank you. Stay flat from Boo Morningstar awesome thank you this one's called survival guide coast to coast interview flat earth music cities of gold hi mark love your work maybe one day i'll stay up late and call your tfr show from the uk please send the links to the survival guide coast to coast interviews and any others that won't be on youtube here are two links for what i think might be flat earth inspired music uh motion sickness by hot chip and the lyrics go, remember when people thought the world was round, the world was round, everything spins, everything spins, everything spins on my head, everything spins, everything spins from my head till my motion sickness. And then there's another one, Patience by Damian Marley, son of Bob Marley. Oh yeah, I know this one, but you know, the lyrics are worth it, I suppose. Uh, the earth was flat. If you went too far, you would fall off. Now the earth is round. If the shape changed again, every, everybody would have start laugh. The average man can't prove of most of the things that he chooses to speak of and still won't research and find out the root of the truth that you seek of. Scholars teach in universities and claim that they're smart and cunning. Tell them, find a cure when we sneeze, and that's when their nose starts running. Um, let's see, and he goes, Dude, did you ever watch a cartoon in the early 80s called The Mysterious Cities of Gold, set in the 1500s? It had everything, and I'm sure some Flat Earth references when they were sailing from Barcelona to South America. Uh, there's a link to that. <clears throat> I know you're not a first-person shooter gamer, but if you fancy a few rounds of CSGO with me, uh, I'd love it. Lots of love, Andrew. Uh, uh, so glad you and Patricia have gotten back together. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I have played a lot of first-person shooters, but I mean, uh, back in the day, you know, I'm, I'm 
not immune to it. I, I mean, going all the way back to Doom and Doom 2 and Quake. Uh, oh yeah, tons and tons of fun. Love first-person shooters. Um, in fact, uh, Fallout 3 technically is a, a first-person shooter. But I, after a while, it just got old. I, so, you know, you've seen it. If you've seen one person, first person shooter, you've seen it all. I mean, there's, you just go basically. I call it um, instead of track and field, I call it track and guns, because you're basically just doing these big loops. Everyone runs in the same patterns. You go up in the same building and jump out and shoot things in midair. And I mean, it's great. But how many years can you do that? It's it's I don't know, it seems a little well, not just a little repetitive. It just uh, there's no progression. There's no, I mean, yeah, you're, you're killing people and, and all that. And I, I, I see the, I see the thrill there, but that's about it. I mean, there's nothing else to it. Uh, it's not. Um, I mean, first of all, like, like for example, not to go off on a little tangent here, but Fortnite uh, is again just a regular old first-person shooter in a rainbow-colored candy coating. That's that's it. You know, with n virtually no blood and. Uh, and parents, I've heard this many times where, you know, parents are, are, it's like, oh, it seems, you know, it's bright, use a bright enough color palette and that'll fool mothers. That's like putting um, uh, sugar coating on cereals, like, like when you did, when Honey Nut Cheerios came out. Uh, yeah, it says, oh, it's honey, right? No, no, it's sugar. <laughs> That's all it is. You put it on Cheerios and, and you fooled the parents into buying it for kids, even though technically it was a sugared cereal. Sorry off in the weeds there let's get back to it question for you q a mark i had a very simple question for you that shouldn't make up uh shouldn't take up most most of your time how and why would world governments conspire or such a large level to hide the edge of the world you already know that one uh, basic op observation shows the western governments are rather inefficient when planning large-scale operations especially when multiple countries are involved yes un <coughs> unless you're talking about something really really big uh, so it would not stand to reason that at some point in, in the Earth's long history that some many people would sail to the edge. Uh, no, because they would be sailing to Antarctica. And Antarctica is a very, very hostile place. You're not going anywhere. you got icebergs, you got a wall of ice, and then the whole continent is above uh, altitude sickness for most people. So you're not going anywhere. Um, I see. Or, t or during World War II, would some troops not be placed to protect the edge to ensure that enemies can't move around the rim to launch attacks? Actually, that's very interesting. And no countries were in Antarctica except for one, which was Nazi Germany, which is, again, look up Operation High Jump, where, you know, Admiral Byrd sent down a full carrier fleet, supposedly to root out the, the last of the Nazis down there. And besides, why would any countries care about going necessarily other than Nazi Germany going to Antarctica during World War II? They were fighting for their lives. Uh, what about the Cold War? Cold War was fake. Uh, would it not make sense that at some point during a high tensions that hundreds of troops would be placed around the edge on both sides? Yes, but they were all working together. The Cold War was an illusion. I, you think I'm kidding? Look, going all the way back to the freaking 50s. Uh, Russia and the United States, or I'm sorry, the Soviet Union back then. And the United States have never squared off. They are secret allies. They always have been. If you think I'm kidding, find out where the the American space program has been launching from since 2011. There's an answer to them. Uh, would it not be impossible to silence that many people? We're not talking about that many people. We're not ta even talking about millions if you don't have to. Uh, you just, and besides, uh, compartmentalization. You uh, need to know basis. This is the ultimate need to know. So it's not like the atomic weapons program in the United States where you had hundreds of thousands of people working on the same thing. You know, we were in a time of war. This is a, di a whole different animal. Not to mention the increase in photographic technologies and how widespread they become. Would that not lead to at least a few photos that managed to slip through the cracks? Well, okay, two things one yes uh photographs have gotten a lot better and, and camera technology has gotten a lot better which is why we're talking about it but you still got to get to the antarctic and then go inland thousands of miles before you see anything of note so you can have all the best cameras in the world but if you can't get the people out there it's not going to help you but the camera technology has really really helped us which is why people can't find the curve when they're shooting long distance photography on any beach it doesn't have to be the antarctic beaches uh, let's see here. He finishes with, I apologize for the length of the email and any mistakes that I have made throughout as I am writing this on my phone as it comes to mind. I would appreciate a response as I am willing to accept your theories if you provide good enough explanations for at least some of my questions. Thank you for your time, Callum, C-A-L-U-M. 
And that goes in my to-do pile, and I'll have to let him know that this is, his responses are on 121. Moving on, this is a private message for help. Uh, my, I hope these messages, blah, blah, blah. Um, all right, I will take that. I will take a look if I can. This one's called Calling All Australian Truth Seekers. Mark, how are you, mate? I'm not going to do an Australian accent. I hope everything is going great. I'll call in today with my workmate, Jake, and you're more than welcome to pass on my contact details for all Aussies who would like to connect. All the best. And his name is Lincoln. And if you want to contact him, if you're down in Australia, his email address is lincolnsharp at yahoo.com. So Lincoln, L-I-N-C-O-L-N. S H A R P E at yahoo.com. Cool. More people should do that. I'll read I'll read your email address if, if you send it to me. If you want me to. This one's called Interesting Idea Regarding NASA. Mark, perhaps we can organize a massive flat earth protest towards NASA at the Space Center in Florida. Maybe the next time SpaceX launches the BFR, that date can be the protest. You never know. We could even uh halt the launch because of the protest okay got to be careful there first off because nasa is a military organization and i know spacex is a private company but nasa is definitely military you don't want to storm the gates not not anytime soon because they will just call on the other guys like oh i don't know the army and the marines and navy and those people so as far as protests go yeah of course you can protest anywhere you want uh, not only is there a space center in Florida, but there's also one in Houston, which I visited with Patricia and um, the documentary team. And it, it's I'm, I'm not going to necessarily encourage protests. You know, activism is more than enough. Activism gets the word out there because protests generally have a negative con connotation to them. Uh, and, and I'm not trying to necessarily be politically correct. Uh, just pick your battles. That's all I'm really saying here. Uh, the media will cover you. The media exposure is more valuable than just about anything. They'll cover you if you're just doing activism. And if you want to do activism outside of NASA, hey, great, fantastic. Just got to scope out the area first. Do some recon before you do it. This one's called Paul McCartney Conspiracy. Hi, Mark. Have you talked about researching conspiracy theories before landing on the flat earth? I was curious about your thoughts about the death of Paul McCartney and the cover-up. I'm up in the air on this one, actually leaning towards disbelief. Like to hear your comments. Thanks, Mark Devine or Devin, D E V I N E, whatever. Uh, no, I look when it comes to duplicates and doppelgangers and clones and all the other fun stuff that that's out there. I mean, it's fine, but what is what bearing, what weight does Paul McCartney dying and then being replaced by somebody else have on the world in general? Uh, sorry, I mean, you know, Flat Earth is the top tier. Everything else is on lower shelves. And the Paul McCartney thing is on a way lower shelf. I mean, it's lower than... There's a whole bunch of conspiracies that are higher than Paul McCartney. So it doesn't really, doesn't really concern me. I really, on a given month, I never ever think about it. So, sorry, not going to give it any time. This one's called Magnetic North Pole. Hi, Mark, what are your thoughts on what's at the Magnetic North Pole? We can land on the moon, what, five times in a row and have live broadcasts of it, but no one video of being at the magnetic North Pole. One would think scientists, the military corporations, would be all over the powers of Earth's most powerful magnetic force. Thanks, Eben Kim. Yeah, yeah, I, I think you're right there. Yes, I mean, there's uh, considering the television coverage that we had on the Apollo program, from Apollo 8, 9, all the way up through 17, you would think that we would spend uh, at least some time uh, showing off the, the, the rare spots of this world, and yet we don't. Very, very interesting. So thank you for that. This one's called Refraction Can't Swim. Hi, Mark. Why the refraction rise above the horizon, only the sun and the boat sink below? Because refraction can't swim. Sorry for my English, Professor Sergeant. And then he spells my name wrong. And that's from Adrian. And I don't know what country he's from. Uh, but yeah, my just so you know, my last name is not spelled uh, like the military. It is spelled S-A-R-G-E-N-T. Um, and with the military, you have S-A-R-G-E-A-N-T. Just saying. But the origin is pretty much the same. 
All right, this one's called Sun's Scorch Trail. Mark, I've seen a lot of models, and this one is probably the most accurate in my opinion due to the path of the sun. In the image, it has the sun in three different locations. In the tropics of Cancer, you can see how the shape and curve of the deserts directly correlates to the path of the sun. From India all the way through California, of course, the climate in some places like eastern USA have more moisture instead of a desert, we get rainforest type humidity. Then in the Tropic of Capricorn, Australia, the southern tip of Africa and southern tip of South America, deserts as well. Just thought I would bring it to your attention in case you hadn't already seen it. Keep up the good work. That's from Chad Van Antwerp. Thank you, Chad. Moving on. This one's called Big Fan Survival Guide, please. Good morning, brother. Long time, no talk. I must tell you from man to man, it's been a great pleasure watching Jaron, Bob, Patricia, yourself, and all the others keep on track. Even ODD and Eric have their place. Although they still distance themselves from you, most of us can still resonate with the information as long as the truth is there. Two things, if I might ask. One, after three years of following you, by the way, um, the, the grammar here is not great, so I'm, I'm, bearing, I'm kind of muddling through it. I trust you long, I trust you enough to hold on to your survival guide. N to hold on to your survival guide? No disrespect intended, just time to figure people out in the realm. Trying to hold on to your survival guide. Two, thanks to you, I've had an even harder time finding a potential wife. <laughs> Okay. Did I ever hear you talk about a flat earth dating site? Yeah, they're out there. Because if not, I don't know what then I'm going to do. Seriously though, brother, because of all you great guys and helping by simply being my freshman recruiter, I'm about to graduate being one of your first followers when I watched Flat Earth Clues. There was only a few hundred views and then I made you the next hundred all by myself. <laughs> oh, you watched it a hundred times? Uh, until I could look up everything you claimed. Um, of course, after a few weeks of banging my head into everything and everybody, I gave in. I myself could no longer prove it in a court of law or anything less than sci-fi versions of reality. Now, as a certified electrician, I have questions about all the grounding electronics and how would it even be possible in space. So I teach others here in Tampa, Florida, while synonymously simultaneously, I think you mean, uh, exposing the local Freemason influence. I'm pretty good at it too. Usually holding their attention of groups upwards of hours on any job site. I place the questions and watch the self them self-destruct into a beautiful flat earth butterfly. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a great line. Uh, watch them self-destruct into a beautiful flat earth butterfly. That's great. Anyway, thanks again. Feel free to read on air if possible. It would be a bragging right for me to my crew. Uh, oh, send the links to any Central or South Florida meetups. Uh, I'm behind on my activeness. I'm, I think you mean activism. Uh, plus, I'm going to be the first Flat Earth DJ. Oh, I think there's already Flat Earth DJs out there. Uh, look me up. I'm already starting IG. YouTube coming soon. I'm going to help go even more mainstream now watch me 2019 let's go hey that's actually a good good slogan 2019 let's go uh so yes i will let him know that i read this on 121 so thank you for that it is much appreciated where's my to-go folder there it is uh this one's called nine-year-old wants an interview mark my kid that has very small kids uh and family friendly youtube channel and he would like to interview a flat earther uh if curious this is his channel He's very curious about the topic as it is being discussed by kids in his circle at school. I've been talking with him regarding the topic and have told him my honest opinion, which is I don't know 100% what we are on. And the main confusion comes from all the lies from NASA. I have shown him and explained to him some of the 
inconsistencies. I just don't buy that we are living on an Asgard-type place, as I explained it to him. He loves Marvel movies, so he is very familiar with Asgard. I suggested that he interview a professional and then share the interview with his friends via his channel. Anyways, let me know if this is something you can do, and I will ask him to come up with 10 questions. If you record it and give us a copy and also share and post, it would be amazing. Thanks, Mark. Feel free to call or email me. That's from Miguel out in Holbrook, Massachusetts. And yeah, I said yes. Be happy to do it. Just let me know when the kid comes up with the 10 questions. I'm all over it. This one's called No Subject. Hi, Mark. I wonder, did you get the email? How do God and Flat Earth fit? Is an aerial possible? Can Flat Earth be circumnavigated? And that's from Kenneth. Uh, okay, one, I don't, but you'll have to be more specific. Did I get the email? How did God and Flat Earth fit? Uh, God built the Flat Earth, or he subcontract, subcontracted out the work. Is an aerial possible? Mm, Going to have to be more specific than that. Can Flat Earth be circumnavigated? Oh, I'm sure it can. Uh, at least the coastline, but you're not going to be able to do it because of the Antarctic Treaty. There you go. Four questions, four answers. This one's called Watch Robitussin Flat Earth Commercial 2018 on YouTube. Uh, Mark, I didn't see you promote this one. Yes, I did. As a matter of fact, I even included it at the beginning of one of my Stranger World episodes. Uh, hey, do you have a PDF or files where I can print it off or the four Flat Earth so I can leave it around work or public places? And I believe... I sent him, yeah, if you want the, the transcripts of the Flat Earth Clues, uh, just say, hey, I want the Flat Earth Clues transcripts, and I will shoot it off to you, and you can print it out. Or do whatever you want with it. Translate it into another language. Many people have. This one's called More Flat Earth Support. Hi, Mark. I've written before, and now write you again. I enjoy your zeal of the Flat Earth, for this world is cloaked in darkness on many subjects. Your own bias on religion was instituted into your mind as a child, clouding your views towards the greater light of revelation which God would have you see if you would only truly read and pray about the Book of Mormon. Hmm, someone soliciting the Book of Mormon. That's pretty unusual. This I challenge you to do. However, back on the subject of the flat earth, remember how you came into the knowledge of this true, of this true. Interesting way of phrasing that. Please apply that same test to the Book of Mormon in an honest way before judging the book by the cover you have been tainted to see. On another note, please check out this YouTube link where a Mormon scholar challenges the saints to see the flat earth of the Bible. Yeah, uh, thank you and God bless Charlie. Look, uh, I'm not going to condemn the Book of Mormon. I don't necessarily consider it one, well, because it is smaller, not one of the big five religious houses. I know that a lot of people are, are big into the book and... There is some conviction there. I mean, Utah did try to become its own country, which would be tough to do considering it's in the middle of the con you know, the North American continent. Uh, but uh, you know what? They, they got dedicated followers, and I, I respect the conviction and the passion. This one's called Survival Guide. Mark, please send me your survival guide. I'm watching you with Patricia Steer from a few days ago talking about Katrina and her experience in New Orleans. Have been following Flat Earth for about a year. Keep on, keep it on. Thanks. And that's from Dean. And yep, I sent him a guide. This one's called Flat Earth Debate with an Astronomer. Mark, this man is articulate, intelligent, and well-informed. Another possible guest for your show. <laughs> Yeah, well, if he contacts me, I'd probably I'd probably interview him. Let's see who it is. Uh, and I still don't know who it is because it's a link to a YouTube video which says, a flat earther responds to an astronomer. Oh, responds to flat earther. Uh, yeah, it's that woman from NASA. She's not just any astronomer. Yeah, link to the original interview, an astronomer responds to flat earther. I mean, yeah, it's a nice idea. She's never going to talk to me. I guarantee it. Uh, there's certain people, I mean, I don't, they didn't even tell, as far as I know, they didn't tell Terry Verts until the last minute that he was going to be on Good Morning London or Good Morning Britain with me when Piers Morgan uh, interviewed us. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, moving on. This one's called North-South Circumnavigation. Hi, Mark. I recently became a flat earther, and I believe what the Bible says about creation. Today, I found some stuff on Google about people who claim to have done a North-South Circumnavigation. They are recent, around 1980 or something, and one was even a commercial flight with 50 seats. Can you help me with this, please? 
uh yeah send me the link okay first off you're gonna send me stuff like that you gotta send me a link or something give me something i mean you can't just say i heard from a guy who knew a guy you gotta remember that's how rumors start uh i heard from a guy i i i got an email from a guy who's who spoke to a guy who said that that i told him in a phone call this guy supposedly was from oregon that i was an agent for the united states government and it's look second and third hand stuff we we've all heard we've all heard them over the years right you got send me links if you're going to send me something like that send me links north south circum, circumnavigation great fantastic give me some sort of core article to look at this one's called modus operandi Hi, Mark. Since looking into the Flat Earth model, so many things make sense around me. I can sleep sound and look up the stars without spatial wonder anymore. But with the question of why, you bastards. <laughs> what? Why wipe out a race? Okay, I gotta just know where he's going here. I remember many newspaper articles when I was little of so-called giants, 12 to 15 feet tall, found by archaeologists, where the newspaper articles are few and far between now. Why are there six million skulls in the catacombs in France? Uh, are you kidding? People, there's there's been genocides for as long as we've had people. Uh, Russians have quite a few too. Um, when a race becomes inquisitive and discovers the outer edges and more information, does it get all too hard for the watchers? Do they wipe out the current species clear? What they can, uh, they'll leave a few clues of past lives and create a new version to entertain themselves for a few hundred years more. Ooh, might be getting closer there. Uh, what is th what is that there after? Energy, ideas from the new breed, more or different art, sound. Uh, this this person this person is totally yeah she is she's tuned in. Okay, wait for a race that descends with sound and vibration through sitting and meditating. Let humans keep looking for this key and watch the games of mere mortals. It's cruel, especially living such a short life, maximum 100 years. It's flesh and bone we're living in and it hurts. I think the truth will relieve us of feeling trapped and knowing there is so much more that we can contribute. Contribute to what? Where to from here? The mind boggles. Not too many people to talk about this topic. Regards, and that's Layla in Sydney, Australia. You know what? I'm going to write her back and I'm going to say, you know what? You're thinking along the line. She's thinking outside of, of even the whole flat earth concept, which is the why. You know, why Why was life created? Why Why are we here? You know, the oldest question that there ever was. The, the highest level of why we are here. And I'm not going to get into it necessarily on, on this show uh, because you know, I'm still focused on just getting people on that on that basic level, which is, look, the world isn't what you think it is. It's flat, and then it's enclosed, and then it's probably made out of energy, and goes on and on and on. But the big question is why? Why would you do it? This one's called FE Related ISS Question. Hello, Mark. I've been listening to you for a few questions now on YouTube. Thanks for the great videos. I was wondering if you have any information videos on the cleaning that goes on or inside the ISS, specifically the official story of how they keep it and themselves clean versus what would actually be available as far as vacuums and air filters and how well those would actually work. It seems to me like their air and instruments would be full of dust, skin, cells, hair, food. Uh, my mind can't wrap around any air vacuum filter system that would keep it clean enough, but maybe I'm missing something. It might just, I, I might just be a stay-at-home mom that has been driven insane with vacuuming and cleaning the house, but it seems like it has got to be a filthy place up there. If there is an up there, wouldn't they have to be cleaning the place constantly with some kind of super advanced air filtration system going constantly? Especially in such close quarters. Wouldn't that, would that leave enough time for anything else? Also, I heard you mention your end of the world packet that you email people who request it. If you have a chance, I'm interested in that. Whether you get my email or not, it's good. And thanks again for the YouTube videos. And that's from Kelly Wilson. Did I write her back? Yes, I did. And again, if you're going to ask for the survival guide, try to ask for it in the beginning uh, because most of the time I won't. I won't see it till the end, and then it goes in my to-do pile, and then you don't get your survival guide until days later. And who knows? It may not have a chance to save your life. This one's called Russia Says the American Toilet on the Space Station Blew Up. 
perfect timing right after the her email. Uh, Russia says the American toilet on the space station blew up, and that is from futurism.com. And, uh, yeah, it, the, the ISS cannot work as advertised. We've had several engineers come on Strange World, uh, which I do on Truth, Truth Frequency Radio, and they've said the place is, is logistically cannot work as advertised. Cannot. Um, and the cleaning aspect is one of them, which is, look, you know, people... Uh, there should be, first off, uh, the obvious things, let's get that out of the way. There should be like no body hair on these people. They uh, they, they, they should have shaved heads. Uh, it, you would treat it no la- no different than a swimming pool. I remember for the longest time, in fact, even now, I think like people with long hair have to wear uh, a bathing cap when they go in public swimming pools because the hair breaks off and then it floats in the water. And then you run into it. And it's like running into spider webs. Well, imagine that uh, in that environment if that environment was real and the filters would clog up the place would get grimy remember how much you know most of the dust you see in your house that's from skin uh the place you'd be they'd be cleaning things constantly in there constantly and it's the exact opposite we never see somebody with a with a spray bottle with a 409 bottle and a paper towel you know spraying things down we never see it we just see tons and tons and tons of electronics tons and tons of loose wires and nooks and crannies that place would be super gross and the and the bathroom situation oh don't even get me started there yeah doing doing everything in a zero g environment if that was real no never this one's called millennials parody song mark after listening to the complete episode of strange world 184 i caught it when you said that you have no apps on your phone that is very true i don't use any apps on my phone it is just a phone it's it's not in my opinion phones were never meant to be computers and i know we're a convenience oriented society uh, but for a hundred years, a phone was just a phone and computers when they finally came out were just computers and never the two shall meet. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm recording this, but not on a phone, but on a, an Alienware R7 with a massive monitor and, and giant sound system. And that's how I like it. I don't like working remotely. If I'm going to work on my computer, I like working in a workstation environment. Uh, you're not going to see it's what, why would I work in a park? You see people, you know, the advertisements, oh, you, you know, work on stuff in your laptop in the park or outside at a coffee shop. It's why it's, it's not as good as a machine you can buy. You can buy amazing workstations and it's like, no, no, the convenience. No, sorry. Sorry. Let's finish with the email. Uh, so I know you don't answer texts. No, I don't. Uh, sometimes I may read them on the show, but most of the time I don't. Uh, but now I realize you may not be able to watch YouTube links. I send via text. No, I never do. So, as I have done several times in the past. You're absolutely right. If you send me a YouTube link on your, on my phone, uh, I am never going to read it. Uh, so I will share the link here. It's a very funny song. So it's well done and you have a great, and it's a great vocal as well. I think you'll appreciate it. It's about three minutes long. Enjoy the laugh. P.S. I also get the impression by something else you said in the past that you m- just may not want to watch YouTube on your phone due to principle. Yay, there you go, which intrigues me. I extrapolate that you know more than the average and or above average person when it comes to our personal smartphones. Yes, I do. However, I am not worried. I am striving to be an open book to all who know me out to be transparent and completely honest about absolutely everything 100%. Well, that is very tough, right? I liken it to the tour of a vacuum. 99% is a good start, but 100% is another story, perhaps. Peace as always, William. Yeah, don't get me started on smartphones. I mean, if I, if I honestly, if I had to do it over again, if I had to leave from Colorado, I'd probably put everything on a flip phone. Uh, but I do, I do look at texts that come in. I don't get as many texts as you might think, believe it or not. Uh, most of the stuff I get is from email. I get quite a few voicemails nowadays. Uh, but, and which is fine. I, I, I will listen to every freaking voicemail that comes in, whether you're a troll or not. All right, let's see how many we can crank out before the end of this thing. Uh, this one's called When the Earth Was Still Flat and the Clouds May Have Made a Fire. That's from a YouTube video of, uh, it was a song. Oh, sorry, that's song lyrics from a uh, song by Hedwig and the Angry Inch. And the song is called The Origin of Love. Uh, interesting clip. Thank you for that. This one's called Inquiry. Mark, I saw your video on YouTube. I agree the earth is flat, but there is an entrance <coughs> inside the earth. The ice holds the ocean. That's from Pascal. Thank you for that, Pascal. This one's called No Subject. 
Dear Mark, I have never heard you mention this film or any of its graphics from a series called Discworld. Sorry if you have mentioned it before or knew of it. Cheers. Yeah, somebody did mention to me Discworld, and it's fascinating. Again, it, we've written so much science fiction over the years that there's almost no concept, science fiction concept, that or, or alternate reality that we haven't covered in literature at this point. Maybe not all in movies or television yet, but definitely in literature. We have written just about everything, which is something I've thrown at the scientific community. It's like, look, we've we've written every alternate reality you could almost ever come up with. I treat it like lottery tickets. Didn't you think that one of them was going to be right? So if you write about, you know, the flat earth is an old concept. Didn't you, you know, one of these concepts, you know, whether in a Petri dish or a snow globe or on God's nightstand or whatever it is one of these concepts is going to be right and kind of why i like the twilight zone episodes uh they covered all these different possibilities of what was happening out there you know which was aside from mainstream science mainstream science all they really care is about building up scientism and calming you down that's all their goal is to make a more stable society if they can uh, let's see, this one's called air force guy flat earth challenge fly over antarctica Fast forward to a minute four. Yep, I will check that out. This one's called No Subjects. Oh, I'm not going to read this whole thing, am I? I'm going to read the first part of this. Hey, Mike. Haha, <laughs> just joking. Matt. <laughs> I mean, Mark. I sent a text with some pics to the 303 number. You have, yep, which I'm not going to look at. I listed on your videos, but I don't know if that's a cell phone or what. I know. Okay, it's from Jordan. Th look, Jordan, thank you for this. Um, it's a little tough to read. I actually glanced at this email earlier, uh, and thank you for that. I, I, I'm not going to read it on air, but thank you for the email. It's very much appreciated. And uh, yeah, contact me again if you get a chance. This one's called Columbia Flat Earth. Mr. Sergeant, good evening. I saw the Canada Convention and there was one of the questions that the people asked you about the moon and I think I know where you can find the answer. They ask you why the moon disappears for two nights a month. So you don't know. This could be the answer on the Book of Enoch, chapter 78, verse 8 and 9. It says, And in her waning, the moon decreases on the first day to 14 parts of her light, on the second to 13 parts of the light, on the third to 12, on the fourth to 11, on the fifth to 10, on the sixth to nine, the seventh to eight, eighth to seventh, nine to six, on the 10th to five, and the 11th to four, the 12th to three, and the 13th to two, on the 14th to a half of the seventh. And all her remaining light disappears wholly on the 15th. And in certain months, the month has 29 days and once 28. You can check out this link. The Book of Enoch, chapter 78. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, the Book of Enoch, which uh, Zen Garcia loves focusing on, has a lot of interesting takes on the flat earth. A lot of interesting takes. Uh, it is not a canonized book of the Bible, along with the Book of Jasher, but I highly recommend it. If you're into biblical texts, uh, check out the Book of Enoch, where a human being was taken up to the, you know, into the attic, basically, of this place and shown all the mechanical processes that were going on and so apparently they were very very cool I and mean, they stayed up there for years this one's called we are aliens mark every time we look into a mirror we are looking at an alien if aliens did ever did visit earth we would be considered aliens to them so it would be cool knowing every time we look into a mirror we are looking at an alien we are the aliens <laughs> that's from the cisco I think he's in Canada, and again, if you're going to drink or smoke something before you write me, proofread your email. This is called Democrat Switching to Republican Over Moon Landing BS. Mark, reason why the moon landing is fake. We can send probes to Mars in 2019, possibly humans, but we refuse to go back to the moon like it's 2019? President Trump is more likely to become president in 2020 before SpaceX ever sends a human to Mars. P.S. I give up on Democrats. I'm now Republican. Democrats probably lied about the fake space anyways. Everybody's lied about the fake space. It's not Democrats or Republicans. It's, uh, it's a group of people that don't care about either party. Sorry, that's my take on it. Okay, a few more. 
This one's called Zetetic Astronomy Publishing Weirdness. Hi, Mark. In an attempt to further my knowledge on the subject of flat Earth, I picked up a reprint of Samuel Robotham's book, Zetetic Astronomy, originally published in 1881 under the pseudonym Parallax. So far, the contents are fantastic, but as a writer who's done a lot of research in the publishing industry, I noticed several bizarre things about the reprint of the book that I thought you might be interested in. One, publishing houses always put their name on the spine of their books because it's free advertising, but this one doesn't. I can see from the inside cover, it's published by Zulu Books. Zulu? Zoo Books, a company that doesn't seem to exist. Z-U-U? The website listed on the inside cover goes nowhere, and a Google search brings up nothing. The photo chosen on the front cover is full of planets, nebulas, swirling galaxies, and all the other cartoons, and NASA shows us all the time, the complete opposite of what the book is about. The write-up on the back, which is supposed to be the interesting teaser that gets people hooked into buying the book, is three paragraphs of how stupid and wrong the publisher thinks the author is, and it reads like someone losing their cool and lashing out emotionally. Publishing a book is a hugely expensive endeavor with thin profit margins, especially for an unknown publishing house. Yet everything about the jacket of this book is designed to make you not want to buy it. Then there's no connection back to the publisher so that a reader may buy any of their other books. They're knowingly settling, setting themselves up for a financial loss. So my question is, why publish it at all? I can't even say they're jumping on the flat earth bandwagon to try to make a few bucks because this edition came out in 2011 before. Flat Earth really took off. I also bought the book new, which means it's still actively in print by this phantom publishing house. The whole situation just seems very strange to me. I've included some pics of the cover in case you're curious to see them. Keep up the great work, James. Huh. Interesting. All right. I'll check it out. This one's called Survival Guide and Flat Earth Picks. Mark, greetings from Douglas in Canada, just a little north of you in the Fraser Valley. I've been a subscriber and regular follower for the past few years and finally have a collection of coworkers on the same wavelength. Here's one quick question and a flat earth observation I've not yet seen anywhere. Question, why do you not have a flat earth calendar for sale at Christmas? What a great gift idea. You know what? That's, that is a good idea. Observation, one day I was looking at the original blue marble shot supposedly taken from Apollo 17 and I was curious to know what phase of the moon would have been at the same time. So I looked it up. Uh, reprinted from NASA. Back in the 60s, it took the astronauts about three days to get to the moon. If they had left at full moon, it would have been starting its waning gibbous phase by the time they got there, which would have drastically re reduced the amount of illuminated moon they have left at to land on and explore. But NASA had a bunch of smart guys who recognized the different moon phases. What they did was wait until three days before the full moon. This is the moon's waxing gibbous phase. They this they timed it so when Apollo lands on the moon, it was starting its full moon phase, giving the astronauts plenty of space to land on and plenty of time for a round of golf and some alien dis diplomacy. Uh, this photograph was supposedly taken by Apollo 17 astronauts with the sun behind them, but how is that possible? While Apollo was returning from the illuminated side of the moon, it is impossible to have both the Earth and the moon fully illuminated sides facing each other unless the sun is in between the Earth and the moon. When looking back from Apollo towards Earth, they would have been facing into the sun uh, with the Earth mostly, if not all, in complete shadow. Sorry, but this is pretty fa this pr pretty famous blue marble photo would simply not have been possible from Apollo's point of view. Stay flat, Mark. All the best. And that's from my lordship. Uh, are we going to end on that one? Or are we going to go? Let's do this last one. We'll do this last one, and then we'll call it quits. Um, this one's called Great Idea. Hi, Mark. I've watched most of the videos and I'm convinced that we've been lied to and the earth don't move at all. So I've been thinking about it and I think I may have a way to find out if someone was to be lifted off the ground only five or ten feet in a hot air balloon with a camera looking down technically the ground would move, right? Oh, uh, well, no. Or a drone with a camera looking down or, or jumping. Uh, anyhow, please let me know what you think. Thank you and God bless you. Yeah, I know, like where your head's at, uh, heck, Daniel Tosh he, he made a joke about it on um, Tosh.0 when he was when he was dealing with this. So thank you for that. And uh, well, you know, what? let's end on that one. It's kind of fun. Uh, you guys already know the answer to it. Uh, thank you for everybody that wrote me. You can send your questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M S A R G E N T 23 at comcast.net. And until next time, guys, stay flat. <laughs>